reflux, PPIs, and your gut, what the research says. Bacteria in your body are supposed to be in certain places, but when they move to different places can absolutely wreak havoc on your health, including strep infections, things like colitis, generalized inflammation, cognitive decline, weight gain. So let's jump in to see the importance of this and the association with PPI medication. Now, this isn't my opinion. It's very well documented with scientific research. And this study was just last year in 2024. And what they found is that when um, oral bacteria, and so strep is something that's found in the mouth, uh, a version of it, and when people were, were on PPIs, which of course lowered um, the acid in their stomach, then the strep could proliferate and, and cause infection. Similarly, bacteria in the esophagus increased in a matter of just seven days being on a PPI. And when I say bacteria, we're not talking about the good guys, we're talking about the bad guys. So these shifts, they felt, the researchers noted that these shifts in bacteria explain the association between taking PPIs and increased risk of infection. There's a specific bacteria called Clostridium difficile. We call it C. diff for short, and it causes colitis. That's inflammation of your colon. It causes severe diarrhea. It can be life-threatening. So if, if you get very severe diarrhea, you definitely wanna to go to a hospital so they can treat the C. diff because when it gets out of control, that's when it gets life-threatening. Okay, then what else does this? So understand, let's backtrack for just a second. The, the stomach is a bag of acid. Why did mother nature make your stomach a bag of acid? It's your first destination of food, right? You chew, you swallow, bam, it hits the stomach. It hits a bag of acid. Why? Because there's bacteria in your saliva. There's bacteria in your food. And so the first destination is a pool of hydrochloric acid so you can kill the bad guys. It's also a pool of hydrochloric acid because it helps break down your food and let you absorb certain key nutrients like calcium and magnesium and vitamin B12. So it's a very key destination. So when we come in and we drop that acid uh, quite markedly, which is what PPIs do, you're at increased risk of infection because you're not killing the bad guys. And that, that is, is the simplicity of it. Um, but I wanna go a little bit deeper. So there's another, so you can have the severe diarrhea, okay? Don't, don't lag on that as far as getting, getting to a doctor. There's also something called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And uh, these are bacteria that again, overgrow because they weren't killed in the stomach. And once you lower the acid in the stomach, you've offset uh, the pH throughout the gut and, and bacteria are growing that shouldn't. Uh, good guys can't thrive, bad guys do thrive. So it really is wrecking havoc. Uh, I wanna go through some of the symptoms so you can see if, if you might be suffering from this because testing for SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, is, is not necessarily done that often. And uh, I want you to know what you could be suffering with. So you have gas and bloating. People say their abdomen is, is really distended. And then depending on whether it's uh, predominantly what's called methane gas or hydrogen gas, you can get constipation or diarrhea predominantly. Also, you can get skin conditions. You can get rosacea. Uh, you can get osteoporosis because uh, what SIBO does is it prevents you from absorbing certain key vitamins uh, like your fat soluble vitamins in particular and so you're more likely to get brittle bones because you're not absorbing um, your uh, calcium with the stomach and also vitamin D which is a fat soluble vitamin. So you're also getting malabsorption because these this, the presence of the bacteria in the small intestine, they're literally getting to your food before you can get to your food. So they're gobbling it up, they're bad guys, they're happily proliferating and multiplying, and you're not getting it. So you're becoming more malnourished, which then is on this feedback loop of your, you know, your immune system le is less strong, and so you're less able to defend yourself, and and they're getting stronger and your good guys are getting weaker. And so really just shifts the balance in, in, in a bad way. Now, the other thing that uh, the PPIs do is they create what's called systemic inflammation. And we can 
sort of do the overview or the summary of this is that they're shifting these good bacteria um, down, downwards, and increasing the bad bacteria. This is called dis biosis and it's looking at what's called your microbiome which is your colon which has anywhere from 60 to 100 trillion organisms and when that shift happens which starts with altering the stomach acid you know lowering uh, the pH um, uh, sorry increasing the pH acid is low uh, increasing the pH in your stomach because you've decreased the acid what this does is it allows these um, you know, offsets the good bacteria, bad bacteria, and what is that associated with? Most of the things you're trying to avoid, from heart disease to diabetes to weight gain to certain cancers to autoimmune disease to cognitive decline, that's the list. Those are the diseases that we are suffering from most in this country. And what the researchers said, and I'm going to um, read the kind of the quote from the study is that they caution that PPI use may be one of the strongest factors shaping dysbiosis in populations because PPI medication is not just popular here it's, it's popular worldwide so pretty impactful now I'm not saying you can't get terrible acid reflux and you won't get benefit from a PPI you will but working with somebody who can who can get you to a place where you don't need that medication because they got to the root cause that's what i want to direct you toward because just being on the ppi medication long term is is wrecking too much damage okay on your health and there's a lot of studies to support this and they just keep coming out more and more and you deserve to know that because as I said, PPIs are one of the most commonly prescribed drugs worldwide. And this connection is known. It is not my opinion. So um, I hope you found this informative. If you know somebody who's been taking a PPI for quite some time, help them find somebody. If it's yourself, uh, find someone who can, who can help you um, get off these medications for the greater good of your overall health. Don't just stop them, but get somebody to help you. And... Um, that's my wish for you, uh, but Pat, you know, knowledge is power, and uh, the, there are alternatives. I want to tell you for sure there are alternatives. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel, uh, give it a thumbs up, and uh, also comment. I love your comments. I pretty much answer all of them, and I look forward to hearing from you.